Hi everybody, welcome to or back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my August garden tour for you. My main garden is located behind my garage and I garden in Chicago, which is zone 5B slash 6A. So it is about mid-August right now and I was hoping to get this video filmed and out to you a little bit earlier, but the past couple weeks have just been so incredibly busy for me that I have A, not only not had time to film, but B, I have not had time really to go back and maintain and even harvest things out of my garden. Um, so she's a little messy at the moment, but I decided to film this video before kind of um, sprucing it up and doing all of the work in there because I kind of just wanted to show you what it looks like, um, like a real, like a real in real life. I don't know, in real life, right? Um, gardening is not always aesthetically beautiful. Sometimes there are problems in the garden. I've got some problems back there that I'll show you, um, and I've got some plants that are just going way more wild than I expected. Um, so a lot of my planting plans for the fall are going to have to change. Um, so I'll show you all of that. And uh, with that being said, let's head on back to the garden. Okay, so starting in the back bed here, I wanna talk very quickly about my tomato plants because I am going to be pulling all of these plants out probably today. Um, we had a really, really unseasonably cold spring, and then the weather went from super cold to super hot really quickly. Um, and the fruit was just taking a really, really long time to ripen, and I finally now have some ripe fruits, but unfortunately, I have a lot of what looks like kind of tomato disease. Um, I don't know if this is leaf curl or some other kind of wilt. Um, but you can see a lot of my leaves are yellow and brown. These are curling here. Um, you know, these are all yellow and then it's even coming over onto this plant. So this is just going to continue to spread. It's going to continue to get worse. Um, and I, I just think I'm going to take them out and not even, not even deal with it. Um, and just chuck it up to saying this is not the year for tomatoes for me. <laughs> But um, coming in here, the varieties I do have, I have um, Veronas. I love these. These are like little mini, mini Romas. Um, they're super good. Um, I love that you can kind of use these whole in soups or stews, or you can put them in salads. They're also like small enough that you can just eat. So I really like those. Um, this variety here is a Paul Robeson. I've got a lot of really healthy sun golds. Sun golds are probably my favorite tomato. It literally, tastes like you're tasting the sunshine and then oop, I lied actually this is my favorite variety this is the dr. witchy tomato um, I love these big slicers so I will say the sun gold is my favorite small tomato and the dr. witchy is my favorite large tomato um, but coming down here this is where I sowed my beets and my carrots and I can link my video above about how I sowed those seeds um, something came in and ate really weird ate the um top row of carrots here and the third row of beets but like left these here so i don't i don't know what happened there um but i'm thinking maybe instead of replanting carrots of putting some greens up there maybe like mustard greens or arugula especially if i pull these tomatoes out because um, as we go over to the other bed you'll see what's going on over there. Um, my herbs are just doing well, as always. So I've got lemon balm, lemon verbena, um, parsley, purple sage, or not purple sage, sorry, uh, purple basil, uh, Genovese basil, Thai basil, which is starting to flower, so I definitely have to come in and harvest that today. I've got um, rosemary, and then under here I've got tricolor sage, but it's just being completely taken over by this, so I gotta harvest that out. And then I've got my dahlias here and my okra. Okra usually produces a lot more by this time. Um, it's been a little slow this year, but I do have um, some, some growing up there and then I've got some flowers kind of forming up there. So we will get, we'll get a pretty good okra harvest. Okay, so coming down here to my pepper bed. Down here, this is my shishito plant and he is just producing all the shishitos for me. Love him. And then I've got banana peppers that I desperately need to harvest today. Um, in the back, I've got a cherry bomb pepper back here. And then I'm gonna swing around to the front like this. This is a mystery pepper. Um, it was supposed to be a shishito pepper, but these are very clear.
clearly not shishitos. Um, I don't know if these are Thai chilies, chili de arbo, something else. Um, everything that I started in, or everything in this bed, I started myself from seed and everything else is where it's supposed to be. So I have no idea what kind of pepper that is. So I'm waiting for it to ripen up, give it a little taste test, see if I can figure it out. Uh, back there is a Melrose that has fallen over. So I got to pick him up. And then this one also is um, this like, it's like these mini bells. Can I get in here? These little mini bells out of the way leaf. Um, so these are pretty cool. Um, this plant is super heavy. It's also fallen over. So I've got to get some supports in there because they're all just crowding out my shard, which is down here. So my shard is under all those pepper plants. Once I get those up and support those, um, the shard will be a little bit more exposed. So this area here is where I planted, um, I planted some mustard, I planted arugula and spinach. And as you can see, my ground cherry plant has completely taken over like this entire space. So, um, yeah, I had no idea that ground cherries got this big, but I love ground cherries. This is a good problem to have. It's just a super bummer because now my mustard and everything else is not going to be growing, which is why I'm thinking of putting it over by the tomatoes. And then here I've got some pole beans. So those are coming along. We're gonna move up. Whoops. We're gonna, I'm gonna swing around this way. <clears throat> my dahlia plant, my onion pot, my thyme, which is just coming along so well. Love it. And yeah, that's it. Now we are out of the garden. So this is kind of what the overview of the garden looks like. And the cucamelon arch has filled out completely and I just absolutely love it. It is just so cool. I'm so happy with it. Um, and if I come in closer, you can see all these little cucamelons hanging down and it's just so beautiful and whimsical and literally exactly what I pictured in my brain when I made this arch and I love it. All right, so we're gonna head up towards the front um, area of the garden and I'm gonna show you some of my patio plants here along with um, the other beds that I have going on over there. All right, so I've got my croton, which has started to flower. I didn't know that they flowered and that the flowers looked like this. So this was really cool and fun. Um, and then I finally got my strawberries planted into this planter. Unfortunately, some of them did not make it um, into the transfer. As you can see, a lot of these are dried out. They could still um, come back. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just give it a chance, but I do have this one, which looks good. I've got that one and I've got a couple up here and that's plenty. I'll probably have to sacrifice a year of uh, berries, but that'll be plenty and uh, to fill out the rest of this pot. And what's really cool is that when the runners start uh, coming out, I can just like place them in these pots um, for like easy propagation. I don't have to put them in another pot and then transfer them. So yeah, really um, happy about that. Okay, coming on up here, this is a fig tree that I just got and it has little figs already on it. So I'm really excited about that guy. I love figs. Um, this is a bush bean plant that I started another ground cherry plant this is my poor little sick watermelon plant i don't know what's going on um he's not looking good leaves are curling leaves are yellow but i do have one fruit so i'm just kind of waiting for that guy to ripen and then i don't know i'll put something else in this pot and then here's where my strawberries used to be so i've got planted in here some tarragon um, another rosemary plant because i love rosemary i've got some dill and cilantro which Hopefully we'll make it through August without bolting um, because they, they'll be okay for the fall. And then back there, I've got an eggplant. So that's that. And then my cucumbers are kind of coming along a little bit better. I'm starting to get like a lot better growth. I know I was talking before about how they, the plant was kind of kicking off the fruits, um, but it looks like I'm not seeing that problem as much. Um, but this is not the best method for growing them. So if I grow them next year, I will not be doing this, but you know, that's what you do with gardening is you experiment and then coming around to my hot pepper bed. I'm so pleased with this, um, 
bed and just how well all of these plants are doing here. They're just absolutely loving it. So I've got my sport peppers here. I've got Thai chilies. I have got um, chocolate habaneros. I've got chili de arabo. I've got um, serranos in the middle and then cayenne here which are starting to yellow a bit. So as soon as these turn red, I'm just going to have a ton of those. So I'm really happy about that. Oh, there's a swallowtail. Ooh, see him? There he goes. Right onto my tail. Yes, lay an egg, buddy. Do it. Excellent. There was somebody in my neighborhood group that raises swallowtails and I gave them um, I don't know, three or four caterpillars. I can't really remember how many I did, but yeah. So it looks like there's some eggs on this dill plant. So they'll be happy to get some more um, caterpillars in a little bit. Oh gosh, that's such a beautiful butterfly. I just can't even. Okay, sorry, I got a little distracted. Where was I? Um, we got the rose bush that I got from my neighbor, which just is gorgeous. And then coming up, I've got my ginger, my stevia, which I need to harvest and dry, um, bay laurel, winter savory, oregano, and then my, oh, my kale that has just been causing me so many problems this year. I was battling cabbage moths and caterpillars, and now all of these little holes, I think these are earwigs. I think this is earwig damage. I don't know. I mean, I can still eat it, but hmm. he's just, you know, it's a lot of work. He's a high maintenance plant. All right, coming up here, I've got my marjoram, which is flowering. So I got to get that harvested and dried today. Same with my lemon thyme. And then we can come up to my beautiful marigolds. So I just, these are just so stunning. They've, are just amazing. And then the Creeping Jenny in the middle just looks so cool. I don't know, I love it. Okay, we're gonna head up to the front of the house and I will show you my native pollinator garden. Okay, so starting down here, I have my black-eyed Susan. And then up here I've got Anise Hysop, which every single time I come out here, there are bees on it. Um, if you want to attract pollinators, like that's the plant, man. Um, down here I've got wild bergamot. This is my aster, which is completely leaning. I've got to figure out some kind of support for it because it's supposed to be like up like this, but anyway. Um, the Ohio goldenrod, which is starting to bloom. And then the spiderwort in front here. I've got my gomfrina, which I've got to harvest and start drying because there's just so many of them. Beautiful. Straw flowers under here. Again, beautiful. And then my sunflowers, which again, same thing, just have so much life. Every time I come out here, there's just tons of bees. So, yeah, I love this, this garden. I think I mentioned in one of my first videos that we used to have a tree right here and it was a giant tree, also had a lot of life. We had some cardinals living in it, we had squirrels, birds, all kinds of stuff. And um, it was causing us some plumbing problems and so the city cut it down. They, um, did, they were not interested in fixing the problem, so they just cut it down. Um, and so this is what I replaced it with. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope seeing my garden in a kind of less than perfect state um, inspires you to keep going if you're having problems in your garden. Um, gardening is unpredictable, you know? Um, some, there have been some seasons that I have put little to no work into the garden and gotten huge yields, had no problems at all. And then some that I've put tons of work into and for whatever reason have like problem after problem after problem case in point my tomatoes right um, but it's still wonderful I still love it it's still just uh, my passion and I will continue to garden for the rest of my life so 
anyway, um, don't forget to like, subscribe, share this video far and wide, and I will see you back here uh, for more gardening content in a week or so. Um, there's still about 10 weeks left in our gardening season, so plenty of time to get things growing.